Hello there everybody, Mr. Wilson here again, um, for what seems like a really long time now, um, but I'm back to do another video on differentiation. So um, this video is sort of specifically targeted towards GCSE further maths and I guess the first part of A-level maths where you sort of introduce to the idea of calculus and how it works. Now in GCSE further maths, you only need to know about differentiation, uh, whereas A-level you eventually go on to integration and then more complicated versions of differentiation and integration depending on the sort of types of questions that you get. But for this video I'm just sort of going to focus on what even is differentiation, where does it come from and how what, what does it even show, like how does it work. So that's what we're going to go into today. So let's start off with where does it come from. So first things first. Let's imagine we have the, the equation y equals x squared. Now if I was to draw this, this graph out of uh, y against x, then as you, you might already know, it would look something like this. It would have like a u shape, and it would go through the coordinate 0, 0. Now, it should be perfectly reflective uh, about the y-axis, although my sketch is very poor. So it is a u shape that goes through 0, 0, and it is perfectly symmetrical. Now, imagine I wanted the gradient of this line. Now, traditionally, at GCSE, if you want to do a gradient of a curve, what you would do is you would I don't know, take a point that you want to take the, the gradient of. So let's say I wanted the gradient at this point here. Then you would take a tangent to that curve. So you would get your, your ruler, and to the best of your ability, you would take a tangent uh, to that curve, so it touches the, the point that you're looking for and goes across. Then you would do the change in y by the change in x, so change in y and the change in x and the gradient of any line is the change in y, so I'm going to call it delta y over delta x. So this Delta just means change in, so change in y over change in x, and you would do that calculation. Now, if you've ever done this, you might come to the realization that actually this isn't very efficient, right? You know, your tangent could be slightly off what the real tangent is, because obviously you're just sort of eyeballing this, you're just sort of giving a good estimate, which is why all these questions at GCSE where they ask you to draw a tangent to a curve always say estimate because there is never a guarantee that you're going to get the exact tangent to this to this curve and mathematicians realized this quite a few years ago that actually this is not a very efficient um, way of calculating the gradient of curve wouldn't it be really nice if there was a really simple way to get the gradient at any point on a curve without having to draw a tangent which is time-consuming and, and not very accurate? Well, there is. So, thanks to two mathematicians, so mainly Leibniz, Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, and Sir Isaac Newton, who came up with it slightly later, but independently, both these mathematicians created what we know to this day as calculus and the basic idea of differentiation. Now, their original intentions were slightly different to what I'm about to show you now, but what I'm going to show you is where does differentiation come from? How do you get the gradient at a point? So let me scroll down a little bit and then I will, will show you that. So let me just pull the page down and I'll share, I'll try and share these notes as well so that you've got them. So again, let's take our, our equation y equals x squared, okay? And again, I'm just going to draw my, my curve out. Uh, just so that I've got a nice illustrative um, diagram here to show you what's going on. Now let's say I take a point on this curve. Now this point has some x coordinate. I don't know what it is, but remember I'm, I want to take the point of uh, I want to take the gradient of any point on this curve. So technically the x coordinate can be anything I want it to be, positive or negative. I've just chosen this point here because why not? Now, the y-coordinate of that point will be, well, because it's the equation y equals x squared, 
if you sub in the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate is the x-coordinate squared, right? Because it's y equals x squared. So that means that this, this coordinate here that corresponds to this x-coordinate, this y-coordinate, is x squared, right? Because y equals x squared. Now, let's say I now sub in a, a point that's slightly further along than this x-coordinate. In fact, it's h more than x. So this x-coordinate must be x plus h. Now, I don't know what h is, but it's slightly further along than x. And eventually, my, my goal is I want h to be 0, because remember, I want to take the, the gradient at a point. I don't want the gradient between two points. I want the gradient at a single point. So hold with me for now, but eventually I want that h to be 0 because I don't want there to be any gap. So if I was to sub in x plus h into the equation y equals x squared, well, the y coordinate that would correspond to, to that, well, y equals x squared. So the y coordinate must be x plus h all squared. Now, with a simple expansion, x plus h all squared is equal to x squared plus 2xh or hx plus h squared. Right, with a, with a simple expansion. Actually, I'm going to rewrite this so that, because otherwise it'll, um, it'll annoy me if the x is not at the end. Uh, they mean the same thing. So, so that is just the expansion of that. Well, as we've already discussed earlier, the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. Right, and we've got two points, right? We've got this point here, and we've got this point here, and we can take the gradient between these two points. So the change in y, well, it's this, take away this. So it's this x squared plus 2hx plus h squared, take away that x squared, right? Because it's the difference between the x-coordinates. So the gradient is equal to this divided by the change in the x-coordinates. Now it goes from x plus h, so x to x plus h, so the difference is just h, isn't it? And we knew this anyway because we took a coordinate and then we went h more, so the difference must be h. Now, this x squared and this x minus x squared will obviously cancel each other out, so this is going to leave us with, if I just sort of scroll down here, it will leave us with 2hx plus h squared, all divided by h. Now, again, there's going to be a little bit more cancellation that's going to happen here because we've got h's on the, on the top and a divide by h. So that h, one of the h's there, and that h is going to cancel. So all we're left with is 2x plus h. Now, this means that the gradient is going to be 2 times the x-coordinate plus whatever the gap is between the x-coordinates, this h that we talked about earlier. Now, remember, I want the gradient at a single point. I don't want the gradient between two points. So I want to close h down. I want h to be 0. I don't want it to exist. I don't want there to be a gap. So if h goes towards 0, so in mathematics, we would use the notation the limit as h goes to 0. All this means is h is collapsing, right? It's, it's starting off at a certain value, whatever h is, and it's going further and further and further down until it gets to 0. And as this happens, well, h is just going to disappear, isn't it? So 2x plus h, well, this is just going to be 2x. There's not going to be plus anything because h disappears. It's, it's gone. So that means that the gradient, the gradient of any point on this curve is just 2 times the x-coordinate. So for example, let's say my original coordinate was the coordinate, I don't know, 2, 4, because obviously it's y equals x squared. So whatever the x-coordinate is, the y-coordinate is the x-coordinate squared. So for example, if we had the coordinate 2, 4, well then the gradient as we've just discovered, it's just 2 times the x-coordinate. So the gradient at this point must be 4, because it's 2 times 2. 
And this is just an unbelievably good and a, a brilliant idea and discovery that both these mathematicians had, which is that now we have a method for discovering what the, the gradient is at any point on any curve. So, for example, scrolling back, I could have done this whole process with the equation y equals x squared plus 2x or y equals x cubed plus 4x. I could have done it with any equation, pretty much, and got the same sort of idea. I would have found what we refer to as the gradient function, right? It's what do you need to sub in to find the gradient? Now, if we scroll back down, <clears throat> you might be able to spot a sort of link between the equation and the gradient function. So just to recap, the original equation was y equals x squared, and we found that the gradient function is 2x. Now these look very, very, very similar. Um, now you may or may not be able to know the link, but I'll tell you right now. So after this discovery, we call this differentiation by first principle. This is originally how it was sort of done and how it was carried out. But eventually mathematicians realized that actually there is a much quicker way to find the gradient function rather than going through this whole process of yeah, taking an x-coordinate and finding h along and subbing all that in. There's actually a much quicker way, which is the key rule for differentiation is, so to differentiate, and I would have this written down, or if I was really extreme tattooed, just to remember what this is. So to differentiate, you multiply by the power, and then you take one off the power. So e.g., if you had y equals x cubed, well, you multiply this thing by the power, so it becomes 3x cubed, and then you take one off the power, so it's 3x squared. So the gradient function is 3x squared. And if you don't believe that, then you could, if you wanted to, go through the whole process of doing the x and the x plus h and that whole process for the equation y equals x cubed. But I, I, can, I can vouch that it is 3x squared. So that is the very basics of differentiation. Now, just to add a little bit onto this, we don't usually put grad equals 3x squared. There's a notation that we use in mathematics for the gradient function. And we usually write dy by dx, so dy over dx. And this sort of originates from the idea that the gradient is the change in y of the change in x, delta y, delta x. It sort of gets its idea from that, which is why we write it as dy by dx. So here, if y equals x cubed, I would say that dy by dx is 3x squared. The gradient function is 3x squared. So times by the power, take one off the power. And that's the basic idea behind it. So just to go through a couple more examples then, let's say we had something a little bit more complicated. So let's say we had y equals um, x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, we wanted the gradient function of this. So we times by the power and we take one off the power. So dy by dx, the gradient function is times by the power, so we get 2x squared, then take one off the power. So we get 2x to the power 1. Now anything to the power 1, remember, so we get 2x to the power 1. Anything to the power 1 is just itself. So this is just 2x. I mean, you can, if you wanted to, put the um, put the power of uh, 1 there, but, but it's not necessary for this. So I'm just going to put 2x. Let me just delete the power 1. 2x. And then next plus 3x. Now remember that technically this is 3x to the power 1, isn't it? So you times by the power, so that's just 3x to the power 1 because anything times by 1 is itself, but then we take 1 off the power. So we get 3x to the power 0. Now, anything to the power 0 is 1. So this bit here is equal to 1. 
So basically what we've got is we've got 3 times 1, which is just 3. So when we differentiate 3x, what we actually get is just 3. So just the number 3. And then if I wanted to differentiate 2, well, remember, x to the power 0 is 1. So this is technically not just 2, it's 2x to the power 0 in terms of x. If we times by the power, we're going to be multiplying by 0. We're going to get 0 here, because 2 times 0 is 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So actually, this that term will disappear when it differentiates, because we're going to be end up multiplying by 0. So it just goes. So the differentiation of this is 2x plus 3. And that's how we get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of just leave it there for now for this video. In the next video, I'm going to go through some actual practice of how we differentiate different things, maybe looking at some negative powers as well um, and some more complicated functions. But the very basic idea of differentiation is that you just multiply by the power, take one off the power, but the key thing that lots of students forget is actually what what does this tell me? And what it tells you is that whatever you get from differentiating, that is the gradient function. It tells you that if you sub in an x-coordinate of on that graph, it will tell you the gradient of, uh, if you were to draw a tangent to that point, what would the gradient be at that point? Without actually having to draw the tangent out, which as we discussed right at the beginning, is very inaccurate, quite time consuming and other such things. So I'm going to leave it there then. And like I said, in the next video, we'll talk more about practice and then we'll move on to something called stationary points, which is a, another interesting thing in the GCC further back and available. So I just want to thank you for your um, patience. If you've got all the way to the end of this video, I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions or, or comments, then feel free to post them below. I'm more than happy to answer those um, sort of when I, I, I sort of see them and get round to them. Uh, but thank you again for your time and I hope you have a fantastic day.